how is AI going to affect data engineering? We get this question a lot, and a lot of times it's people who are scared about their career or investing in their career because of AI. So my name is Chris. I'm the CEO and founder of Data Engineering Academy. We are the largest data engineering school in the US. We've helped over 1,500 people transition their skill sets into a higher paying data skill set to land a higher paying data role. And in this video, we're going to discuss how AI is going to affect the data industry, specifically data engineering, and how you can best prepare in order to benefit from this. So let's jump in. Ultimately, I think we all know that AI is important and it's generating more data than ever before. In fact, the data that AI is using is then creating more data and vice versa. The question is, how can you benefit from it instead of having all the usual fears, which is AI is going to take my job. And I like what the CEO of NVIDIA said, which is it's not AI that's going to take your job. It's the person that learns AI. That person is going to take your job. So here is the three-step framework that we like to think about this. Number one, actually upskill your current skills that have nothing to do with AI. Number two, learn how to use AI to do this first part better. And then number three, actually learn the advanced stuff in AI so that you can become one of the top 1% of engineers in the current market. Because we see businesses not necessarily asking for AI engineers just yet, but we see it as a bonus where if they try to hire a software engineer or a data engineer and that person knows AI, they are seen as a massive, massive plus in today's industry. So let's jump in. Step number one is to actually upskill the current skills in your tool belt. And a example that I have for you is if you were working at Spotify and you were to use AI on the data that is currently sitting in Spotify's data warehouse. Again, most of you guys are probably use Spotify. You know how it works, right? You see the music, the songs, the genres, the playlists, all that data is being collected somewhere. It's like, how do we use AI to use all this? Here's the thing. Most people are so afraid of AI, but in reality, if you don't even know how to do the basics, you probably shouldn't even worry about AI taking your job. So you have to learn the basics because the first step is to actually create that data warehouse that collects that Spotify data so that you can actually utilize that data and those insights. This involves something like data modeling. This involves creating pipelines. This involves using coding languages like SQL, Python, Scala, R to actually create these pipelines. This involves putting all of that data warehouse in some sort of cloud. Maybe it's AWS, Azure, GCP. Maybe you use tools like Snowflake or Databricks. Maybe it involves streaming that data in your Spotify app in real time. Either way, the main thing there is that you have to learn the essentials first because worrying about AI taking your job or skills that you may not have even accumulated yet is almost like worrying about Facebook ads taking your marketing job in the newspaper industry, right? If you have a job as a newspaper writer or marketing, somebody who writes ads in the newspaper, worrying about Facebook ads is a different story. But if you don't even know how to write or how to market, don't worry about Facebook ads yet. Learn the skill of writing and the skill of persuasion first. And so that's the best non-technical analogy I can think of. But again, learn the basics first, learn the fundamentals. That's step number one. And it relates exactly to step number two, which is how can I use AI to enhance what I already know in step number one? I'll give you an example. We have clients all the time that come up to me and they're like, hey, how is AI going to take my job? You know, do I even need to learn something like SQL, for example? And the best frame I can give to you is, well, if I were to tell you right now, hey, use ChatGPT to write SQL code or use ChatGPT to write, you know, an, a cloud in AWS infrastructure that has a VPC and has all these security parameters around it. Can you do that? And they're like, no. I can. And I'm like, great. So you're worried about AI being able to take something that you haven't even been able to learn how to do yet. You see what I mean? Like the point is to use AI to help you do this faster. So I'll give you an example. If you write SQL code and you get a bug, instead of sitting there and scrolling through the pages of SQL code to figure out where that bug is, you could probably just copy, paste it, ChatGPT, and tell it, hey, find the bug and the error for me. And then boom, ChatGPT can find that in a second. If you get an error as you're building something on AWS, you can just copy, paste the error code, give it to ChatGPT, ask it, hey, what's wrong here, et cetera. So the idea is that in step number one, 
you are actually learning the skills. And step number two, you're now utilizing AI to enhance it. But what a lot of people do is they get worried that AI is going to take over everything. So they're like, I might as well not even learn the tools. That's just not true. Step number one is learn. Step number two is to enhance. Step number three is to learn the more advanced things in AI. And one example that I can give you is something like working on AI data driven pipelines. So what does AI data driven pipelines mean? Well, when you create a pipeline, you, you can in the old days, and it's crazy I'm saying old because this is two years ago. In the old days, you would create and input tools to detect anomalies, to detect errors, to give you a learning if something goes wrong. But nowadays you can use AI to detect all that in real time and even fix it. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Not just alerting you, but actually fixing it in real time as the data is going through. So the bigger innovation that's going on is being able to use AI to do that with unstructured data, right? So structured data, unstructured data, totally different things. Unstructured data can be something like a video or audio file, something that's a lot harder to code, to dissect, to merge, but AI is making all this possible. So what's another example of something you can learn with AI in the data engineering space? A hundred percent has to do with ethics and privacy, right? And if you think about it, we personally in Data Engineer Academy even use things such as AI callers or AI avatars in our ads. I know it's crazy. They look entirely real. But what happens there is that a lot of regulatory issues might come about. Hey, you used my face. Hey, use my voice. Hey, you didn't have, you know, my permission to, to do this at scale, whatever the case is, there's going to be a lot of ethics issues and a lot of privacy issues. So there you have it. Just to recap, it's three very simple steps. Number one, you want to actually learn the fundamentals. Number two, you want to use AI to enhance the fundamentals. And number three, you want to learn the advanced parts of AI that are sneakily and very quickly becoming part of everyday life in big tech companies. So if this was helpful, please subscribe, share, like, check out the snowflake video over here. And for everybody else, just be on the lookout for more videos related to data engineering, related to AI. And for now, comment below, what is the latest AI tool you've used or latest AI workflow that you've used in your current tech job? Share it, comment, and maybe you'll get a response. Bye.